Man, why did someone tag me on this on Twitter? Every once in a while, I get tagged in some shit on Twitter. I'm like, come on, bro. It was the FCHAM tweet. He was talking about the Capcom devs. And someone tagged me in it and said, Sejam was right that Capcom fanboys are the most toxic in fighting games. I think that's true. You know what's crazy is not only did they give FCHAM a dev kit, which is crazy, right? Because he's a competitor for one thing. But second of all, he showed it on stream and all the shit on it. Whew. I think Street Fighter 4 players are evil. You know why? It's because you motherfuckers were like, Street Fighter's the best. We like frat boys. All you guys are fucking cheering and chugging your beers and shit. And then everybody else was like, but wait, what about the rest of the fighting game community? You're like, fuck them. Let's go. <laughs> Cracking cold ones with the boys. And fucking DPF ADC and around like fucking idiots. And then the next game comes out and you guys are like, oh shit, maybe I should finish college. And you realize you squandered all those years fucking chugging beers instead of fucking writing papers. And now that there's all these lovely things happening in the world, like, you know, your Eunice and your Dragon Balls and your Mortal Kombat's with excellent netcode and like, you know, all these other games, you guys are over there like, uh... Yeah, dude, this shit's always been cool. I wasn't just partying it up before... Like, fuck you guys, all right? The world was always a great place with lots of options. You were just too busy drinking the same shitty Heineken for fucking 10 years to realize that maybe there's some other things in the world that were good, and they've always been there. Thing is, I like Street Fighter 4 a lot. Actually, when Street Fighter 4 was at the end, and all the Street Fighter 4 players hated it, and were like, Street Fighter 5 is the future. I was like, no, nah, dude, this game's tight. They're like, fuck Elena, and fuck fuck you and i was like no this game's cool and then like street fighter 5 came out i was like this game's cool too and they're like no it's not fuck you you just didn't play street fighter 4 and i was like but i was i was on the i said it was also i'm mad today no i'm chilling dude dude you remember when sakura mashed three frame fierce and it would trade and then she'd get stan line kick ex tatsu off of it oh that shit was hor horrendous. It was it was a disaster. Grappler players never played defense in Street Fighter 4, dude. I never seen a grappler player block on and wake up ever in their lives, but I've seen Kurnus drop the big tier one. Thanks very much. Yeah, Street Fighter 4 grapplers, you were doing something on it. Well, you might as well like fuck. You got backdash, invincible backdash, SPD or lariat as Zangief or focus backdash, ex green hand. Bruh, the sky's the fucking limit. Like, what were you gonna do? The best option against Geef on wake up is backdash. Like, before he wakes up and sit there and wait and hope that you don't die. Yeah, wake up Ultra 2 and you backdash, hoping he SPD'd and now you're dead. You're like, all right. Although I will tell you, watching someone try to dive kick them and Geef waking up Lariat trade EX green hand combo. Oh, that was hilarious. Watching these dive kick characters with four buttons, jump, dive kick, Geef just goes and then he just blasts them out of the air into EX hand. Ha! Huh. That shit cracked me up. Akuma was really, his demon was really fucked up because you could just sweep and every time you swept, input demon and not finish it. And if they focused, you would just cancel your sweep into a demon. And they took the, the HP from absorbing the sweep and then the demon hit them every time. They changed that in Ultra. Which demon? Either. Man, that game was, that game cracked me up. Street Fighter 4 was such a fun game. It has so much crazy, stupid shit. Dude, Super Breathless was one of the craziest ultras I've ever seen. That shit was hilarious. If that shit happened these days, if that was, if that came out now, you motherfuckers, you, the scrub quotes we would see about that, oh man. Why was it so good in Super? Oh, it was like nine times faster. So, Breathless is Abel's Ultra 2. He crouches on the ground, and he lunges across the screen and grabs you. The problem with it is that it was like instant in Super. When they, when they gave him the Ultra, it was like instant. So if you jumped, or if you were like in the air, or you did anything from like half screen away, Ultra 2. The fucked up thing, it's also armored, yes, that's true. So it could beat a button too. The fucked up thing is that he's like a football player. He could hold it. He could just get in the stance and hold it. So you would jump, right? Because you're like, oh, I don't want to get hit by Ultra 2. You jump. He just holds it. You jump, and as he holds it, he's just like, oh, you jumped, sick. Holds it, waits for you to land, grab you as you land. The best part was people would just walk up to people at, like, a quarter screen. you get a knockdown with Abel, and they would just dash up breathless. And, like, what are you going to do on wake up? Backdash? All right, grab you. Jump? All right, I delayed it. Grab you. Nothing? All right, I just let go. Grab you. Rose Ultra 2 was fucked up in that version, too. What is this a clip of? It's so fast. Look at this shit. It does mad damage, too. Sick. And it has armor. And there was moves that were armor breaking, so it should beat it. But it was so fast that your armor breaking move wouldn't come out fast enough to beat it. Like Abel's armor move. 
Abel's armor move was wheel kick. Come on, bro, that shit's slow. It's crazy how fast that Ultra was. You know what's funny is that Ultra 1 was still ridiculous, but Breathless is really good in matchups where Abel has really shitty defensive options. It was just way too powerful, right? But that was the version where Rose had zero frame orbs. It was really quite something. Yeah, it was fun. Super, super was a crazy time. AE was a pretty crazy version. What are you talking about there, fucking Callisto? AE was the version that had fucking Yun and Yang. That was crazy. A2012 was fun. Ultra had a lot of really weird patches, like band-aids that they try to patch the game up with to fix shit, right? How many Wake Up Ultras did Kazunoko get away with? Kazunoko's a genius. You know, he was playing Guilty Gear, and he's like, man, every round the meter starts over. In this Street Fighter game, when I mash up or cut on Wake Up, I gotta spend bar. And he's like, wait a minute. If I Ultra, I don't have to spend any bar. And if it hits this motherfucker, he's dead. Hope you like this. Ultra had some issues for sure. The fix to unblockables, like delayed wake up, was not good. And there was a lot of janky, like, ugly shit that got put in the game. Red Focus just made all the characters who are good better. Except for, like, a few fringe cases. I remember when that game was out, defending it a lot. Being like, I don't get why you guys hate this game. This game is mad fun. And now it's, like, the opposite. People are like, Sage M hates Street Fighter 4. I'm like, what? That game is mad fun. The thing is, is I feel like if Street Fighter 4 came out in these days, now, all of the cheapest, best OSs, and, and like, people would just play the best characters, and, like, all the OSs and all the tech and stuff would get figured out even quicker, and so people would just use it. Man, Street Fighter 4 with rollback would be fun to play for sure. Having your one frame links not be affected by delay timing so you can just input it and it just works, that would be nice. Select plinking was morally objectionable. I would never. You sound like a real scrub, Callisto. These motherfucking melee players are carving fucking notches in their controller so that they can fire at the correct angle and you won't rewire your stick to fucking select plink. Coward. Yeah, I mean, I think... So here's what I'll say about one frame links. I think one frame links are fine if that's what you want to be the executional barrier for your character to do hard stuff. I think you can build other barriers for characters to be difficult and not require one frame links. It's just up to you, right? You can always add in these executional barriers if you want a character to be good, but you don't want everybody to access it without working on something. That's always an option for you. Or you can make the toolkit of a character diverse and vast and make all the moves good at certain things so that the decision making is what move do I use in this situation rather than execute this hard move that's good in every situation. You know what I mean? Those are funny times, the Marvel Infinite Saga, because I remember at E3, Dragon Ball and MVCI were both playable. And both of us commentated in the sun for like eight hours straight and we were miserable and I had super bad fucking sunburn and i probably almost died doing that job so after almost dying we went inside of uh e3 and we got to play marvel infinite and we got to play dragon ball and i remember after trying both games i thought to myself like wow both these games are pretty fun like steve and i played marvel infinite and we really liked it steve and i played dragon ball and we really liked it and i remember tweeting like man i got a chance to play both and i think both games are really fun so far and people were mad at me. So many people were like, why don't you hate Marvel Infinite, right? So many people. Hold on, let me equip my shill pin. Let me equip, this gives me plus 10 defense against shilling. I've never been to a trade show and played a fighting game and not thought it was fun. So of course, when I tried both games, I thought they were both fun, right? As fun as thanking Dr. Professor Mike for dropping the big Twitch Prime, thanks very much. I mean, they're both fun games, right? It's I'm not gonna play a fighting game at a trade show and not think it's fun.